Hello, this is the Learning Channel at weatherweb.tv. This video is brought to you in association with Weather School. And in this video, we're going to look at cold fronts. Firstly, let's remind ourselves what we mean by a front. A front is simply an area which marks a boundary between two air masses. In the case of a cold front, it's where cold air is displacing warm air ahead of it. The cold front is shown on a chart like this as a blue line with solid blue triangles. On a black and white chart it will be shown as a black line with solid black triangles. If the triangles are hollow that means a front above the surface. The triangles point in the direction to which the front is moving. Rain surrounds the frontal system like this. Notice how close to the rear edge of the cold front the rain is. Ahead of the cold front is a warm front and in between the two is a zone known as a warm sector. It's this zone ahead of the cold front that we're going to look at first. Ahead of the cold front we are in the zone called the warm sector. It's here that there could be lots of low stratus cloud and also some outbreaks of drizzle. Visibility may be moderate or poor and you should be watching for darkening skies as the cold front approaches. However, as the cold front arrives, the skies will darken markedly, such as here. We might find rolls in the cloud forming as turbulence gathers within the cloud and heavy rain starts to fall. This cloud is often cumulonimbus cloud, or it could be that the cumulonimbus is shrouded by other cloud. Just ahead of the front, the temperature will start to fall. We'll also notice the winds backing, and as well as backing, those winds will tend to increase and become gusty. Heavy rain will arrive and the pressure will start to fall. Eventually that pressure will fall more rapidly. Now we get to the zone of the cold front itself. As the front passes overhead, Sometimes thunder and lightning occurs. This is caused by the transition between warm air ahead of the front and cold air behind it. Cold air is scooped upwards into the atmosphere. It's forced to rise and can form large cumulonimbus clouds. These produce the narrow band of heavy rain that occurs as the cold front moves through. And it may also produce thunder and lightning. Not all cold fronts produce heavy rain and thunder and lightning, but you should be aware now let's see what happens once the cold front has moved through. Just behind the cold front is often a marked clearance. This is where a line of cloud forms along the sky and moves quickly through your area. It will be followed by blue skies such as these. Behind the cold front the temperature will fall quickly. The wind will veer. It will start to fall as well in speed. Pressure will rise. Often we can get one or two hours of fine weather behind a cold front. What we need to be looking for though is the formation of cumulus clouds. Those are the white fluffy clouds in the sky which indicates that showery weather is going to be following. These are the small cumulus clouds that I'm referring to. They'll start off, start off as very small fluffy clouds, but eventually they will grow. They'll produce showers as well. Those cumulus clouds may well build into large cumulonimbus clouds. It's these that produce the showers behind cold fronts. Not only could there be showers, but there could be thunderstorms too. Not every front will produce this sequence of events. This is simply an idealised model of how a cold front appears when it passes through but you should be aware that this is what happens on most occasions. You can find out more about cold fronts, warm fronts, occlusions and troughs at Weather School. For more information and the dates of our next school, see weatherschool.co.uk. I'm Simon Keeling. Thank you for watching the Learning Channel at weatherweb.tv.